Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm working on a 2008 Vauxhall Mariva. So we're a really nice quick video for you and what I'm going to do is show you how to remove the factory fitted stereo which is very very easy, literally takes seconds and also go through all the part numbers and accessories you need to be able to put a large double din head unit into this gap. Now you'll notice the shape, it's got diagonal edges there as opposed to straight edges so you need a fascia to go in there. You're also going to need an aerial adapter and you're also going to need, if you've got controls on the steering wheel like so to turn the volume up and down and adapt it to make all those work. First things first, we just need to point out by following this video guide I am in no way held liable or responsible for any injury to yourself or damage to your vehicle. Useful tools to do the job. A little flat blade screwdriver, plastic leverage tool, you can get these off eBay, Amazon, they're about a pound, well worth having, save you damage any of your plastic trim and of course release keys. Now the radio itself, if it's never ever been out, which at this age of vehicle is unlikely, it may have some little grub screws in, Allen key grub screws. Off the top of my head I believe there were a three mil, very tiny little things, you just wind them out, pop them out of the way. Once they're out of the way, put your release keys in, you'll feel them click, that one's locked in. Same with the other side. All right, that one's stuck, there we go. Now what you're going to do, you need both hands for this and you're going to basically spread them. So you're going to put them that way on. Yeah, You're going to pull both of them at the same time and pull forward at the same time to release the unit. Before you do that, press eject, make sure you've not left a CD in. Loads of people come to me and say, oh I've left my CD in, can you get it me back? Yeah, well that's stripping the stereo down when it's not powered up. So uh, it's quicker to press eject now, just like the owner of this vehicle there, left a CD in. Moving on, so let's get this radio out. Once you've got it sort of an inch out, you can pull your little release keys out, pop them out of the way. The unit's quite weighty, quite heavy. It is steel at the back. Now, you'll notice I've put something soft down here. We don't want to scratch any of the trim because, like I say, the back of it is metal. Some of it's sharp edges. Give it a bit of a wiggle. They are quite, quite well in, especially if they've never ever been out. There we go. Now, what you're looking at on the rear is a quad lock and an aerial. So this is speakers and power, and this is your aerial. The aerial has a sort of pinch connector. You pinch and pull up. Just turn it around so you can have a look. There we go. It's called a FACRA, FACRA connection. So if your aerial adapter, it's a FACRA adapter that you're after to convert it to a normal car one. This one, you pinch both sides of the lever here. I'm going to need both hands to catch the radio, of course. And basically the lever rotates up, and then you pull it out. Like so. There's your lever, and you just rotate it up, look, so it's on a locking mechanism, and then you pull it clean out, like so. Next, you're left with the steel cage. On the back of the steel cage, you get some light in there for you, there's a TX20, just there, right in the middle. You've got to take that out. So go ahead and undo the TX20. TX20 now removed from the rear here. Again, could have done with my torch. Uh, the next thing is these metal bits. Now these metal bits are shoved up behind the cage and this is why we've got the flat blade screwdriver. Basically pop your flat blade screwdriver in and just bend them down a bit. The base part of it you can sort of pull up a bit because it's split. Yeah, And then we sort of wiggle it out. Like I say they are stuck quite well in. You're going to need both hands to jiggle it around pull it forwards. The aerial is normally connected to the back of it so we'll have to unhook that as well. There we go, with the item free we can now pull away. You might want to wear gloves, sometimes these are razor sharp on the edges. There you go, the aerial is stuck, like I was saying. Unhook your aerial from it, don't want to pull the end clean off it. There we go, and away that goes, don't need that either. You're now left with the, left with the bare basics. Now what I'm going to do is show you all the bits and bobs that you're going to need to fit a double din radio into this. I'm not going to show you how to fit the actual radio because it is pretty straightforward once you've got the right parts and I'm very time constrained today so I literally don't have time to do a full installation video unfortunately. But with this, these pointers you should be good to go. You're going to need a fitting kit to get the thing in the hole because like I said it was the wrong size. Now here we have a box full of bits, I'll tell you what manufacturer. There's a trim. You get all different colours. Look, this one's silver. The car is actually gunmetal, so I'll swap that over for a gunmetal colour. So this trim here, gunmetal. 
silver. No good. You need to get a gun back for one. We'll get one of those in a minute. A trim for the radio as well. And it also comes with a cage. A spare cage. There's a cage up. Now this is from a company called Connects 2, this fitting kit. Part number CT23VX10, as you can see there. And there we go, get into focus, tells you what it fits, quite a lot of vehicles. These are available again, Amazon, eBay, that type of place. Normally in the region of, well, depends where you go. It's 50, 60 pounds, it's a guess. I do guess, because like I said, I don't really deal with this side of it. Right, pop that out of the way. Sorry about that, get the camera in focus again. You're gonna need a steering control adapter. There we go, another one from Connects 2, part number CP2VX52. These work a multitude of vehicles. And basically there's little dip switches on a box in here that you pop up and down to set it to your correct vehicle. It will work straight off on a Mariva or a Corsa, they're already preset. And then on the right hand side there's four dip switches which basically click up and down depending on which radio. So if you've got a Sony it'll tell you which configuration to have them for a Sony or a Kenwood, etc. Useful bit of kit. Uh, next up, you're going to need, if you fit in a DAB radio, because most of them don't come with an aerial, you're going to need a DAB antenna. I'm using a window screen mount one here, and it's powered. So the power wire to this will connect to the blue wire coming out the back of your new stereo, and that will power this antenna. Simply sticks to the inside of the windscreen, top left corner. Normally gives pretty good reception. So there you go. That's exactly what it is. That's the description made by Autolead. Get these again, Amazon, that type of place. We have one more thing to show you. Aerial adapter. Like I was saying, that's a FACRA connection. You need to convert it to a normal radio DIN connection with this. It's also filtered, as you can see. Little blue wire coming off it connects to the same blue wire coming out the back of the radio that you've used to power your DAB antenna. So the FACRA end plugs into the car here, the other end plugs into your new radio. Again made by Connects 2, part number CT27AA14. Nice and simple. That is everything you need to fit a large radio, such as this Kenwood DPX7100 dab going in this, but they upgrade the radios every year, so, you know, whatever you fit is your choice. A couple of really quick tips while fitting your new double DIN radio. On the Mariva, it's very easy to take the glove box out. It's four TX20 bolts, one here, one here, and there's one underneath here and here. Gives you access to this big area so that obviously you can put your hand straight through. There we go, to get your cables through. You can tuck them up neatly behind all the other cabling so that they're not dangling down in the way. You can go across all the way to the edge and pop them out the side here, and then obviously up the side of the window screen. And if you put a microphone in, you can pop it up near your interior mirror right in the middle of the car. It's out of the way. Next little quick tip is regarding the wiring. Um, we've plugged everything in, so here's the adapter that works for steering controls. And there's the bit that comes with the radio. That plugs in your radio just there. Here we have the antenna control, which is the blue wire I mentioned. Now this is controlling... There you go. Filter for the radio and also the DAB power. So they're spliced in to the one cable. The other wire on Kenwood specifically is this blue green wire, so it's got like a green trace down it, and it says remote control. Now in your wiring kit for the steering controls, it comes with this cable. This cable has a jack plug on it, which is only used really for Sony radios, or a blue wire with a green trace. You have to splice it together so that it goes to remote control, like so, otherwise your steering controls won't work. If it's a Mariva that you're doing, which watching this video I will assume it is, that's the configuration on this box to get it all working for this year, just get it into focus there. So the second basically pin up, all the rest down, and for Kenwood it's two down, two up. Like I say, there is a configuration chart that you will get in it, which looks like this. And there's two different steering wheel configurations as well. And then there's configurations for all the vehicles as well. Just a quick tip, hopefully that speeds up your installation for you. Like I said, there's nothing complicated to it really. As long as you do all that, you should be working just fine. 
And guys, that concludes this tutorial. Hopefully this is of some use to you. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer you as quickly as possible. Just bear in mind, I get inundated with questions every day. There's sort of millions of you guys and one of me, so just bear with me. I will do my best to get back to you quickly. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye for now.